Is the thermometer in there? Yeah. Right, okay. That's that sorted out. Michael wants to hatch some eggs and I've got three or four incubators. So he's just grabbed one. I think he's gonna come back and get the other ones as well. So I used to incubate a lot of eggs years ago, but I haven't really got the time and I don't have the poultry now that I used to. So, so I don't do it now, he's gonna do it. So he must well have the machines. Right, just have a quick look down here before we get off on a trip. You've got enough for an hour or so. I got an inkling that one of these is going to pop any minute. Any minute. Anyway, um, I've got to shoot off and do a bit of a business and then we're coming back and we're going to spend a couple more hours with this. This is my Ritchie Slitter and Brown's Rake. So this, this rake is designed to go on a slitter, just not that one. Um, so we had to get our engineer to create a bracket that meant that we could mate these two together. So, and what this is what he's done. And this is, these are the brackets, these little brackets come with that machine. So nothing on that's been altered. And the only alteration to uh, this machine is a couple of holes. One this end, one that end, one in the middle over there. So what we got? One, two, three, four, five holes. We've got the drill in the galvanized chassis of my Ritchie um, slitter. So I was really pleased with that. So it's all a good solid job, all held together. That's not gonna fall off there. We could adjust the height of the springs on this little top link here. And I've currently got it a fairly aggressive. Not really, really aggressive. I mean, there's plenty more adjustment in there. I can put them down another inch or so, but so fairly aggressive. Um, yeah, you can definitely see where you're going or where you've been. Right, so yes, this afternoon, we'll be out to spend an hour with that. If the sun comes out, I'll fly the drone as well. Um, whether the sun's gonna come out. What a bit of blue up there. Not a lot, right. Okay, so got to go to Stroud, got to drop a computer off um, to the CAB office for my missus. And then I've got to go to Cribs Causeway in Bristol and pick up my computer, the one that crashed a while ago with all our class and JCB footage on it. I don't think they've saved it. We'll find out, but I don't think they have. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you when I get back. Come on, pooch. Well, that was disappointingly unimpressive. I got a message from Curry's yesterday to let me know that my PC was back um, and that I could come and collect it. So that's what I'm doing. Just stood in a queue at the desk to collect it for, all right, it was only 10 minutes. It wasn't forever. Uh, watching three guys serving one customer. Um, one seemed to be in charge and the other two were pontificating and the guy who was actually not doing anything at all was busy playing with his smartphone and smartwatch. And I'm standing there holding the ticket. So obviously they can see I'm holding a ticket and they basically ignore me. So I eventually get to uh, the counter and the guy says, um, oh, can I help you? And I said, well, if you're not too busy playing with your phone, oh, well, I'm doing a swap over or something. I'm going, well, no, you're playing with your phone and the swap over is for yourself. You're supposed to be serving me. Is that too much to ask? 
Um, yeah, I've come to pick, pick up a, a repaired computer. All right. And he goes, what's the name? So I tell him my name. And the, the guy who says it's in charge says, oh yeah, this it's that one over there. So I'm expecting my PC to come out in a box or something. No, it's just a naked PC. It's got a expanded foam protection inside. So they've got, got some vibration protection on it, but, um, and I said, uh, right, okay. So it's all repaired. Yeah, yeah, sign this bit of paper to say you've had it back. That's fair enough, I can do that. I said, anything about um, saving any of my data or hard drive? And he looks at me vacantly and I go, you've no idea, have you? He goes, no. He said, I can ask my um, ask my manager. And I said, that guy, he goes, yeah. I said, he won't have any idea either because I didn't speak to any, either of these two fellas. So I'm pretty certain I'm gonna get back and turn my PC on and find it's just wiped. There's nothing on there. Um, so everything I requested and I asked and I pleaded for and I made sure that they knew what I needed and what I wanted, pretty sure, other than my PC should work when I switch it on, nothing else has been done. So after the previous video of me saying, oh, the young fellow in there was going to look at it and do this and he was going to do that and all these promises, no, no communication, no phone call saying, unfortunately, um, it's beyond repair. We can't recover it. We've tried everything we can. Nothing. Nothing. So, yeah, I've got to say Kerr is um, 2 out of 10 for that. So that might raise to 3 out of 10 if it actually switches on when I press the button. But you ain't getting more than that. Comfy. This afternoon is not quite going to plan. Uh, I've just plugged in the PC and no, nothing saved or lost. Um, our MUP engineer has turned up. He just put a new hydraulic pipe on uh, Land Rover for us, hence the cup of coffee. And it started to rain. So I'm not going to go. Uh, slitting and harrowing for a minute because everything's going to stick to it like what's named to a blanket. So you got it in there? That didn't take long then. No, no, no. No, it's not too bad. I ran a bit of wire down down the channel. Is that wire? Oh, yeah. I thought that was fishing line. No, no, it's just a skinny bit of a uh, 15 amp wire. Oh, is it? Well, it, it wiggles through the hoses a lot easier. I suppose. I bet that was easier getting that through than it was pulling that back. <laughs> To be fair, it actually slid up there really nice. Did it? Oh, yeah, right, yeah. okay. Yeah, it wasn't too bad at all. Right, okay. So, nice new pipe. So, hopefully, now we can make it sit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work as it should. Hopefully. Yeah, but obviously, only, only when the pump's running. Yeah. All right, um, you're going to go do a quick once round just to make sure it's, it's hopefully it's going to pass lower. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay. All we use for. Yeah, all right, well, I'm going to leave you to that because I've got to go and look at, I've got to go out there and just start a pissing down. Um, I've got to go look at a tree job. So how long are you going to be here for? Another hour? Yeah, I would have thought so. I'll probably be back before you go. All right, totally all right coffee's you. over there, mate. Lovely job. All right, much, thanks, Sam. Cheers. It stopped. Just as I come out the door, it stopped. Mind you, it always sounds worse in there than it is out here. That old tin roof. It didn't have rattle when it's raining. Um, it's one of those things that the guys come in in the morning and they can hear that rattling out there. It's like, oh, I don't want to go out in it. And then you walk out the door and it goes, it's not actually that bad. But I am going to take, I am going to take a coat, I think, in case it comes over again. Right, I've put my long coat on. And before anybody asks me again, because nearly every time I put this coat on, people go, oh, where did you get that from? It's, it's a riding coat. It's built for riding horses. That's why it's got a big split at the back. So basically anywhere that supplies stuff for riding, you'll get one of these. Or if you really, really, really want one, you can go into the description box below this video and in my Amazon influencers shop, it's not my shop at all. It's just a list of stuff that I use on the farm, stuff I wear, stuff I use. 
because um, people are always asking, well, where'd you get this from? Where'd you get that from? I put it all in there. So if you go into the Amazon shop and below and click on there, and then there's stuff for like firewood, there's clothing, there's some of the, you even get to find out what books I read. Yeah. Um, and you'll find this coat in there. And if you really, really want one, you can buy one off there. They're not that expensive. They do keep you dry. And no, I don't ride a horse, but I just like the coat, okay? So, so if you want one of these, any, any riding supplier, any, most country stores will do them. Um, they'll charge you for the nose. Go onto Amazon. You haven't got to have the one that's on the page, okay? So I can only put one on there, one example, but if you, shop in there and look for you know other clothes similar you'll find these and you might find one cheaper than actually is listed on my page so shop around but yeah good coat um i don't think this is a true barber doesn't need to be it's a wax cotton it smells like wax cotton it feels like wax cotton it's it's what is wax cotton so it does the job okay so i'm off to kill cut to see the tree team um, not necessarily to see them because they know what they're doing, but I will catch up with where they are. But the neighbour next door has said, oh, while they're here, could they come and do some for us? I've probably got a day or so's work here. Well, we're kind of there. And if that's going to work and the two neighbours are sort of doing stuff between them, then it might just be the way to go. So I'm not here tomorrow. I'm going to Oxford tomorrow to spend the day with Mrs P. So... Every time I go there, or not every time, but most days I go there, I take the camera and I record some video. And I might make some of that public that you can see our bits and bobs around Oxford. Um, it might be soon, it might be in a bit when she's home recovered. We'll see, we'll see. But um, I did do a video when I went up there Sunday and I put it on fast forward. And basically I did the trip from here to Oxford in just under, I think it was, was it four minutes or five minutes? Anyhow, I worked out it was 900 miles an hour I was going. That's the fastest Fiesta Sport you've ever been near. So I might put that up just as a bit of fun uh, with the soundtrack. And people would go, I'm not watching that because it's making me car sick. Or they might go, that's a blinking long way in a very short time. It'll be one or the other. Right, I'm listening to Radio 2. Um, and I'll turn it back on again after I've said this piece, but <clears throat> I'm, I'm of half a mind to actually boycott Radio 2. Um, with the way they've treated Steve Wright and now Ken Bruce, I've really fallen out of love with the BBC. A lot. Um, they, those two guys were icons of... of when I was growing up, but apparently now um, they're not, um, you know, I mean, there's stuff on Radio 1. When I was a teenager, I listened to Radio 1, I thought it was the bee's knees. Um, and that's kind of the same stuff as I listen to now because it's 80s. Um, I don't mind a bit of 90s, don't mind a little bit of noughties, but it's, um, well, actually, I quite like a bit of noughties. <laughs> anyway, um, so, yeah, I'm pretty pretty miffed and they've put Vernon Kay on instead of um, Ken um, to me that's chalk and cheese no offence Vernon you're a lovely bloke nothing against you but you're not Ken Bruce and alright I don't know both sides of the story I don't know the whole story but I believe it is my belief that Ken has been treated rather shoddily and I, I reckon for at least the, the first month or so Radio 2 is going to be out the window. I'm going to go back on my DAB and I'm going to have absolute 80s, absolute 90s and a bit of local radio and the BBC can go and do one. They are all a bunch of wind-up merchants, my guys. Um, and I can't point the finger because I'm probably of the lot of us probably the second biggest wind-up merchant I think Martin Martin takes the biscuit he's the biggest wind-up merchant I think I come a close second but the two youngsters they're definitely learning <laughs> they're, they're definitely picking it up so uh, to you and Oz's mum I'm really sorry 
that your boys are being, you know, contaminated with us. <laughs> but I think it has set them in good stead for the rest of their life. Yeah. Stand up for yourself, stand your ground, and, and enjoy it. So, I want that tractor. I'm not, you put it out there. Don't put it out there if you don't want a daft dog. Right, that's Sam the new engineer going with a shopping list of things that we could do with doing to it. Uh, you want me to let you in? What do you like? Right, second time lucky, you can go now. Anyway, do you remember this morning I predicted that um, we could have a calf today? I was wrong. So this morning, I took a photograph of her having a stretch outside and I posted up, she's about to pop. Uh, and she did, she had a calf. But she had her calf about half an hour after she had hers. So, so when I got back from seeing the guys, came down to check the cattle because I knew they were going to want a bail over there, um, looked for her, found her thinking, hang on a minute, has she tried to take her calf, because that was what I was expecting the calf, but no, she had her own calf too. So, two little babies. Um, I didn't film getting them in. She was as good as gold. Basically, I picked her calf up. Um, well, actually, what I did, I, I uh, spray iodine to the navel on both calves. Then I picked that calf up, I just carried her in here, and she followed me as good as gold. I was gonna try it with that one. Yeah, she wasn't so keen. I had to use the rake on her, but that worked really well. So, um, yeah, two heifers are now, well, they're now cows. So, cows have been up and sucked. Uh, everybody is happy hunky-dory. Um, I might have to split this pen into two if I get another one calf, because 160 isn't far away, and there's another one in there also, can't remember the number, she's not far away. I might actually need another pen. So I'm just gonna grab her a bucket of water because she doesn't have uh, mains. And then I'm gonna go and give the guys next door a bail. You've had their bail. Everyone's got a fresh bed. This is why I gave them a fresh bed this morning because I thought this might happen. So uh, yeah. And do you know how much slitting I've got done today? None. Yeah, she ain't far away either. Go on, darling, in you go. Go on, there you go, go on. Don't want that. There you go, darling. I'll bring us a grub in a minute. The other thing that distracted me when I got back, Dave the Builder was here, dropping off a few bits and bobs. It looks like we might make a start on Mrs. P's veranda Monday. I wasn't expecting him to start on the timber bits for another three weeks, but uh, apparently a space has come available in his diary. We're gonna crack on with it. Happy days. Winds change direction. It always goes that way. Looks like the wind is in the east. That's why it's cold.
I'll be worried about that tomorrow. Yeah, you will. So. But yeah, if you come back, I'll well, you come back. Well, breach. I'm going. I'm leaving here at quarter past seven. So if you want to come back at break, yeah. if you will, and have it, make sure the water's topped up. Yeah, that's fine. And then again, lunchtime. I'm not going to be back here till five o'clock. But you spend the day, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, unless something goes wrong. If you've got down there and there's a, there's a bloody legs hanging out of it, you don't know what you're doing. Or, or she... Uh, <laughs> well, no. No, if, if she's... I mean, if, you, if, you just, if you've got just toes yeah. and the nose, just, that's, just leave it. Yeah. But if you've got back legs hanging out or something, then that's... Then I call the vet, so... Oh, OK. But, uh, I mean, don't call the vet just because you see toes hanging out, because that is part of the process of being born. The toes come first. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want a four hundred pound bill just to go instead of watch it. Oh, yes, I had a calf. Yeah. I mean, the calves are quite small. Consider the size of the heifers. Mm. They're huge. Yeah, exactly. But um, I think they're popping them out quite nicely, actually. Yeah. Well, that those two were born in an hour and a half. Yeah, they are. I came up to see you. I went there and looked at them before I came up to see you guys. And they were sort of fiddle faffing around. Pick, yeah. Like yeah. Well, that red one was the one I thought was going to go pop. Yeah. Well, she did. <laughs> but she went pop after the black one. Yeah. Black one went pop first. Over the chat between each other. We still do first. Yeah. Yeah, That's got to go into Warren's tomorrow. Fine. To drop that off at Warren's in the morning. Yeah. And you put an alternator on it, then you can pick it up on the way back. Yeah, fine. So if you want to take. Yeah, we'll pick her on that. Yeah. Drop that off. <coughs> <coughs> you won't be off to go to the field, will you? Yeah, exactly, yeah. All right, okay.